In this two-part series, I'm going to show you four ways to remove objects in moving video. We are going to start with some simple solutions and work our way up to some more complicated scenes. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Adobe After Effects and Photoshop to remove people, objects, and signs in moving video with simple backgrounds. In the next video, we will cover using more advanced After Effects methods for objects in scenes with complicated backgrounds and movement. When that video is finished, there will be a link in the description. For all of these methods, we are going to be using Adobe After Effects. If this is your first time using the program or are a beginner, I have put together a tutorial that explains how to use After Effects right here. The first method that we are going to look at is basic content aware fill in After Effects. This feature allows After Effects to replace the object that you want to remove with a fill layer that the program generates from another part of the frame. So let's create a mask around our subject. Create a composition from your clip, select your clip, and then the pen tool. Use the pen tool to draw around the subject that you would like to remove. The mask should allow for some background around your subject. We don't want it to be super tight. Now go over to the drop down beside our clip, mask, and change our view from add to none. Now let's track our mask so that it moves with our subject. Drag your playhead to the beginning of your clip. Then click the drop down beside your mask. Click on the stopwatch beside mask path. This will add a keyframe to the timeline. Now we are going to go through our video frame by frame, moving and adjusting the mask as our subject moves. Every time that we adjust our mask, a keyframe will be added to our timeline automatically. If this is your first time masking in After Effects, or you would like a more in-depth tutorial, I have one right here. When you are done tracking your subject throughout your video, Change the mask view from none to subtract. Now our object is gone and we are ready to fill in this space. Select our video clip, go up to window, choose content aware fill, and then click on the fill method drop down. This tells the content aware fill what kind of area it is working with. I generally use object when I'm removing a person in a scene or surface when I'm removing text from a sign. I haven't yet found a use for edge blend, but just mess around with these and see what works best for you. Once you've selected one, click Generate Fill Layer. Let it analyze, and then when it's done, you can see that we have this new layer called Fill Layer, and that our object is gone throughout our whole video clip. Content Aware did an amazing job with this video clip, and is by far the easiest way to remove objects from moving video. Clips like this, where the object is behind a simple background, work really well. You may have a difficult time with this method if an object passes in front of your subject, if your subject passes behind an object, or if your object is not surrounded by the same background on all four sides. These particular situations do not work well because the content aware fill is pulling from all sides of your mask. So if there is a color on one side of your mask that is different from the background of your object, then you're going to run into some issues. A lot of times what ends up happening is content aware fill takes that color that's not supposed to be in the fill layer and accidentally puts it there anyways. Content aware fill will also have a difficult time if your background is patterned, textured, or is very complicated. You can see in this clip that because the text is over top of brick, the content aware fill does not do a very good job. In this really complicated background, there's no way the content aware fill is going to know where to put what. Throughout the other three methods in this series, I will provide solutions to all of these issues. In the next method, we are going to look at how to remove subjects that an object passes in front of, that are not surrounded by the same color of background, and objects that are on top of patterned or textured backgrounds. So basically, what to do when the last method doesn't work. For this method, we will use both After Effects and Photoshop. We are going to take advantage of Photoshop's more powerful content aware fill and other tools that will do a better job of removing objects. We will remove our object in a photo of the first frame of our video. Then we will use the tracker tool to give the photo the same motion as the video. This will allow our fill to move as our video does. I've had some amazing results with this method, so let's get right into it. To do this, we need to open the first frame of our video up into Photoshop. Bring your playhead to the front of your clip, pull up the content aware window and click create reference frame. We aren't using the content aware feature in After Effects. This is just an easy way to open the frame up in Photoshop. In Photoshop, we are going to start by using the content aware fill feature. This will only work if there is another part of the frame 
that is the same as the background behind your object. This also won't work with aggressive patterns or textures. In this scene, we want to remove this gap logo. And if you remember in After Effects, the program didn't do a great job with this one because a truck moved in front of the sign. In Photoshop, we have more control over where the content aware fill feature is pulling from. So we won't get white blotches in our fill layer. So let's zoom in, grab the lasso tool and draw around our object. Hold and drag to do this. Make sure that your layer is selected and then go up to edit content aware fill. You'll see that this green paint comes up. This is what the tool is currently pulling from. If we look at this preview window to the right, we can see that this tool could be doing a better job. It has selected a lot of area that is not blue like our background. To deselect these areas, paint over them. This will let the program know that you do not want to pull from these specific areas. To add areas back in, hold the Alt key while painting. To change the size of the brush, we can do that up here. I think this looks really good. Our sign is going to be in the distance, so we're not going to notice a lot of these little imperfections. Hit OK and then Control D to deselect. If we did want to smooth out this area, we could use the smudge or clone stamp tools. If we are dealing with patterns and textures, Content Aware Fill is not going to do a good job. But we can use the clone stamp tool instead. To use this tool, click on the clone stamp icon. Find a part of your frame that you want to cover. Then identify another part of your frame that looks similar to this. Hold the Alt key and then click on this area. Go back to the area that you want to cover and click and hold to paint over it. It is important to understand that when you're painting, you are painting an exact replica of this area. You are not painting the same circle that you clicked on originally over and over. If you did want to do that, you would have to reselect that same circular area after every time you clicked off. It definitely took me a while to get used to this. In this image, we are trying to get rid of this text that says drive through. The way I tacked this was I went through every brick and used the empty space in that brick to paint over the white space in that brick. In some bricks, it took me a while to build up an area to pull from. I did it this way because I found that different bricks had different colors in them and different exposures. Once I was done with this, I started on the lines. I tried to pull from areas with similar exposures. Doing all of this did take me quite a while. I think that this looks really good, so let's merge our layers together and then save our project. When we go back into After Effects, our reference frame should now be updated with the changes that we made. However, mine does not do this, so I import manually, file, import, file, and then click the merge option. I drag it into my clip under my video layer and then delete the reference frame. Now we need to create a mask on our video layer around our drive through text so that we can remove it. We are going to create and track our mask just like in our last method, except this time we are going to line up our mask so that it is tight on our subject. We will keep it this tight throughout our whole track. I found that if my mask was not standard throughout my whole clip, it would reveal new pieces of the photo underneath and it would look really off. We want our mask to reveal the same part of our photo throughout our whole video and nothing more. In this situation, you can also increase the mask feather and see if that helps. Make sure that your mask is tracked and change the mask view to subtract. Bring your playhead to the beginning of your clip. We can see that the text is mostly gone in this frame, but we still have a bit of a white border. So let's go back to our mask dropdown and change the mask expansion and feather. This will make the mask slightly bigger and less rigid. Play around with this until it looks good. Now let's scroll through our clip. We can see that in the beginning, our mask and our photo are lined up. But as we move through our video, this is not the case anymore. This is because our photo is stationary while our video has movement. To do this, we are going to track our video's movement and then attach that information to our photo. That way, our photo will move as our video moves. The first thing we need to do is to create a null object. A null object is an invisible object on your screen that holds data. In this case, our null object is going to hold the motion data from our video. This will allow us to attach it to our photo. To create a null object, right click inside your composition, New, Null Object. This will create a layer in our composition called Null1. Now it's time to extract our motion data to this null object. To do this, we are going to use the Tracker tool. Go over to our Tracker window or Window Tracker. Click Track Motion. 
This will open our video layer up in a new window. We can also see that we have this tracking point now. This point will lock on to whatever we put it on and allow the tracker to extract motion data from our video. If we go back to our tracker window, we can select scale and rotation as well as position. I usually like to select all three for this. It allows the tracker to track all aspects of our object's movement. When we select these, it will add another tracking point to our video. Let's move these tracking points to a part of our building that has a high contrast and definitive lines. We want to make sure that our tracking point will stick to this area and not fall off. Let's make our tracking points bigger by clicking on them and moving the corners. The inner square is what is going to be tracked. The bigger the area, the more accurate the track, but the longer it will take to analyze. Before we start the tracker, we are going to edit this target and make sure that it is set to our null object. This will export the motion information to this null object. Click the play button beside analyze. This will analyze our footage and our tracking points. Once it is done, we can scroll through and see how it looks. If your tracking points fall off, try a different area and then analyze again. When you are ready, click apply. Apply dimensions X and Y and click apply again. Now we can see that all of these keyframes were created by our tracker. This is our null object here with our motion data attached to it. Let's minimize those. Now it's time to link our null object to the photo. Go over to the parent and link dropdown beside our photo and click null one. Now our motion data is attached to our photo. Turn off all of your layers except for your photo, hit play, and now we can see that our photo moves. Turn our layers back on, and now we can see that the text is gone throughout our whole video. If your photo isn't lining up to your video properly, try and retrack the video with new tracking points. Also make sure that your photo and video are lined up at your first frame. One last thing before I go is that I wanted to touch on this particular video clip, where the van moves in front of the sign. This took me a while to get right, because when I was masking around the van, I was masking too far in, and so the sign was actually passing in front of the van, and it looked really odd. If we zoom in, we can see there is this section where the white from the van is kind of meshing with the white from the logo, and this is a very difficult place to create a mask. I ended up masking tight to this line, and then using the expansion tool to make the mask larger, and the feather tool to make the lines less rigid. And that brings me to the end of this video. If you have any questions about anything that I went through, please leave them in the comments. This video combines a lot of different techniques, and if any of these are new to you, I would recommend practicing them outside of this tutorial. It will make actually then removing objects a lot easier. In the next video, we will cover more complicated techniques for object removal, and we will figure out how to get rid of something when the background is chaos. When that video is finished, it will be right here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.